Liza Borne, and I'm at ALA in New Orleans talking to Lauren Miracle, who is the author of Shine, which was recently reviewed in Book Page and many other books, including the Winnie books, the Love Ya Bunches books, the TTYL books. So thank you so much for talking to me today. My pleasure. And thank you, by the way, for not only... You did a great job of reviewing the book, but you also wrote this beautiful article in response to that Wall Street Journal article, oh, and thanks. it was gorgeous, so thank you for that. Well, I guess I'll just start off with this. We, we have blogged about Lauren's books a few times in the past, not only because we really liked Shine, but also because Lauren frequently shows up on the ALA's list of most challenged books, not to mention a recent article in the Wall Street Journal where a writer, Megan Cox Gurdon, wrote a an essay, an op-ed, basically about how the darkness of current YA books and how these some of the themes in the books, anything from writing about suicide to hate crimes and these serious topics might actually influence kids to do these things like they hadn't thought about them before and the, uh, the YA community responded in mass in outrage. So first, do you is showing up on these lists a point of pride? Is it something you get sick of? Do you not even care? Oh, well, I totally care. And at this point, it's a point of pride. But when it, from the very first time it happened, which was about four years ago, I mean, I'd gotten angry letters before. But when I first showed up on this list, the ALA's top ten list of most frequently challenged books, I felt that feeling that I used to feel as a kid of, of shame, of uh-oh, of, you know, oh, no, I've done something wrong. And... Um, it's interesting to me to tap into that feeling because I feel like that's what I write about a lot mm-hmm. is how do we live a life that lets us feel proud about what we do as long as we're doing it from the right place and what is that right place. At any rate, so, from, so for me to feel that feeling of shame reminded me that here I was living this life and writing books, which is exactly what I've always wanted to do, and then here was somebody saying, no, people don't like you, and saying it very loud. Mm-hmm. And then I called my editor, and she said, no. Lauren, and I said, I'm sorry, Susan, I don't know what I did, you know, I'm sorry, and I was such a newbie, she said, no, be proud, this means that you're making an impact, you know, whether people love it or hate it, at least that means, I mean, a vanilla pudding isn't going to do that, and so, and I never wanted to be vanilla pudding, so now I take it as a, as a badge of pride, and I also think it's good to get people talking about things that make them uncomfortable, mm-hmm. because it's oh, yeah. probably we shouldn't put whole verbs and Mm-hmm. Well, now that the, it's been a few weeks since the Wall Street Journal piece came out, now that the dust has settled a little bit, there, I know you responded on your blog, your editor wrote a passionate response on the Abrams blog, coming to your defense, and um, now that... And Eliza wrote a passionate response. Oh. <laughs> well, now that, now that that is in the past, and maybe you've had some more time to think about it, are you surprised that that piece was even written in the first place? Um, do you think that why authors will always have to defend their work? I just think it's, I think my husband gave me the best frame of reference. He said, Lauren, it's just silly, you know, and it is just silly. Like, we all did get, I, did, I didn't get indignant when I read it on behalf of myself because I've had those kind of attacks so often, but I got very indignant on behalf of editors who she made, she made the argument that they're just, that they we're all out to, for money, that we're all out for shock factor. and. You're in the book world. You, do, you know that's just not true, and it's certainly not true with either of my editors, whom I adore, and who, mm-hmm. you know, have integrity oozing out of their pores. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess my response to it now is, it's just a reflection of, of who owns the paper now, and of the values that are. I, like I never, I didn't know about the whole Robert Murdoch. Is that right? If I get his name right? Mm-hmm connection and that it's taken a conservative slant. I think it's a shame in terms of the Wall Street Journal's readership knowing that it's not a very balanced piece, but will young adult authors have to defend their work? Probably. And that's probably not a bad thing because it does mean that people are genuinely invested in in young people Mm -hmm. and they care. Mm -hmm. point that was not made in this piece, um, and I think that I did mention in my blog post, is that you write a great variety of books, to, to put it mildly. I um, do. Shine, which is this story that takes place in a small southern town, it's about an anti-gay hate crime and kind of a mystery surrounding this crime, to these other books for younger readers, which are about friendship and school and, and lighter topics. How do you... and, and not even to mention some of your other books, which are written in internet speak. And how do you 
come up with the ideas for such a variety? And is there a, an age group that you're most passionate about yeah. writing for? Um, and how do you balance it? Well, in some ways, I think that um, all things in my career have been somewhat serendipitous, and so mm -hmm. I embrace surprise, which is which is good. <laughs> And it's also good that I started off so fresh and went behind the ears that I didn't know anything about, oh, you're supposed to brand yourself, mm -hmm. you're supposed to be, and I'm like, and then when I did, when somebody told me that term, I was like, I'm a human, I'm a writer, I'm not a brand, that's ridiculous. So I reject that, and because I was writing without any real success for such a long time, I could write whatever I wanted without thinking, oh, and then is the next book going to be a Lauren Miracle book? You know, it's just, so I did middle grade and YA, and like you said, fluffy and fun, as well as darker books. Um, no, I don't have, don't have a favorite, and I think they're equally important, and I stand behind all of them as much, because I've always thought that girls who are just straightforward and lead these conventional lives, th their lives aren't any less important, and their problems aren't any less important than girls like Kat and Shai and who has to do with different kind of stuff. Well, what is your favorite thing about your job? The fact that I'm doing what I love, and um, that's my favorite thing. And then my second favorite thing is that I don't have to wear grown-up clothes. And my third favorite thing is getting to meet people like you and kids and librarians. And I love it. Well, finally, we are at ALA right now, which is all about libraries and librarians. And, and they're all around. <laughs> I was wondering if you could tell me about a favorite library or a librarian from your life. Um, in Favorite library memory? Why? Yeah, libraries right. have been valuable to you. Well, I would say that it would go back to Atlanta, and libraries are important to all. I mean, I, I can't. I don't know a single writer who doesn't have an abiding love for libraries and librarians. And I went to the Fulton County Public Library in Atlanta as a kid, and my mom would run errands, and she would just drop me off at the library because that was a happy place for me. So I just sit there and I would browse all the aisles. And I never felt like I could always be in the young adult aisle. And the librarians never told me anything other than, you know, they, they, I remember one librarian saw that I was looking to get some Stephen King horror books, and she said, oh, well, maybe you should try some Scott Card, because there was a spit tool as well. And so I don't have any specific librarians that come to mind, but when I think of libraries, I think of just getting to go there, and it was quiet and peaceful and air-conditioned, and I could be there for hours and be content. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, finally, what are you working on now? Do you have any other teen books in the works? What am I working on now? Mm. My brain gets frazzled, so I'm working on the third of the Flower Power series, which are written for fifth graders, mm -hmm. and then I'm also starting a new series about Winnie's little brother, Ty, mm -hmm. so it seems like I'm going young, mm -hmm. but I'll be back to the up as well, to the old ones. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Lauren, for talking to me, we and to you readers, and... Tell them all to check out your books if they oh, haven't okay. already. So, cool. thanks. <laughs>